right, welcome back to our next session. Let's um, open up our session with prayer again. Lord Jesus, we thank you for, for the church that you've built, Lord, with your own blood. And we thank you, Lord, for the gospel message that you've given us to spread it, Lord, uh, to get the people to hear the gospel and get saved. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the pastor of this church and his leadership. Uh, Father, I pray that you would lead him and guide him and help him to be a blessing to this uh, wonderful congregation in this church, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for this time and just pray, Lord, that you would bless our session now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our next session is called, How Can Jesus Christ Be the Son of God? How Can Jesus Christ Be the Son of God? Uh, well, according to Islam, uh, Allah doesn't have a son. So he don't, they don't believe in uh, God having a son. Uh, so uh, that's a big problem for Muslims. When we claim that Jesus is the Son of God, they think that we blaspheme. We partner, we associate like partner with God when we say that. So uh, in Islam, they don't have uh, that teaching that God or Allah has a son. So um, Muhammad didn't know Greek to understand the meaning of son in the New Testament. You know, New Testament was written in, in Greek. And the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. So in Greek, uh, you know, in English, when we say son, there is only one meaning for son. Son means the physical son, derived by parents, uh, by uh, physical uh, relationship. And um, so that's son. But in, in Greek, there are two words for son. The first wo word for son in Greek is technon. Technon means a boy derived from his parents by sex. That's the first meaning of son, which we know that God doesn't have a wife. God doesn't have a son. He doesn't have a girlfriend. So he doesn't have a physical son. So Jesus is not the technon of God. There's only a Jesus is technon of Mary, like physical son of Mary. But God, Jesus is not the technon of God. He's not the son of God. Because we know that God doesn't have uh, a wife or son. And the second word for son in Greek language is huvios. Huvios is the second word for uh, son. That means same nature as. Same nature as. For example, uh, Mr. John. John is a son of peace. That means John has a peaceful nature. John wants to dwell uh, peacefully with all people. Or we say Hitler is son of war. That means he is. He wants to fight. He wants to have war and kill people. He's an angry man. So this word is used for Jesus Christ to be son, the Son of God, who we are of God, same nature as. For example, when we say that Jesus is the Son of, son of God, that means he's got same nature, same attributes as God. For example, whatever God does, Jesus could do. Uh, God is the only one who can raise people from the dead. And Jesus said, Lazarus, Come forth, and Lazarus came out of the grave. He was alive. God is the only one who can forgive sinners. Jesus said, My son, thy sins be forgiven thee. He was able to forgive sinners. God is the only one who can overcome the physical laws, like turning water into wine, walking on the water. That's what exactly Jesus did. He was able to overcome the physical laws. Why? Because he was the son of God, who we us of God, not take none. Same nature as, exactly same attributes, same nature. I don't have same nature as God, but Jesus has the same nature, same attributes, same power, same knowledge, uh, same ability that God has, Jesus had. And uh, so uh, that's not only Jesus is the Huvias of God, but also in the Bible we read that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten only begotten Son of God. Jesus is, so we, re, we read Son means who we are, means same nature as God, who we are of God, only begotten. What is the meaning of only begotten? That's two combined words, only begotten. Uh, in Greek is, it's called monogenes. That's the Greek for only begotten. Monogenes, which is two combined uh, words. Mono, what is the meaning of mono? Like monorail. Mono means one and the same, one and same. Like monorail means one rail, or monotheism means one God. Like polytheism means many gods. Mono means one. So mono means one and same. Monogenes, what is genes? Genes means 
the word that we, we get uh, genetics from. Genetics, we get that from genes. So we have 20,000 uh, you know, cells in our bodies that forms our uh, detail of our bodies. Like one cell uh, uh, or one gene gives us the color of our hair or color of our eyes or all the details. So we have 20,000 genes in our bodies. And uh, so Jesus has one gene with God, same gene as God. So uh, only begotten Son of God means, means that Jesus has the same genetics, same genes, same genetics, and the same nature as God. So this is same nature as God, Son of God, means who we are, same nature as God, only begotten means same uh, genetics as God. So what does that mean? Well, if Jesus is the same, has the same genetics as God and the same nature as God, that means Jesus is God. That means Jesus is God. He can't be less than that because he's got the same genetics and same nature as God. In how Jesus Christ can be God then? How is that possible? Well, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, when God created the Adam on the sixth day, let's see what he said. And God said, let us. That proves that us refers to God, not God and angels or God and God got help from other creatures. No, God created only uh, man. He said, let us. That means in God's head, there's more than one. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. That tells me that there is likeness between God and man. Immediately I can understand there is likeness. The same image as God and man, they have likeness and similarity. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And verse 27, look at this. So God created man. So in, he said, let us, that means uh, in Godhead there is more than one God. It does not like God and angels. Uh, uh, you know, God didn't get angels help to make man. He said God. It didn't say God and angels create. So God only created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So there is same image and likeness. There is similarity between God and man. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Let's see, uh, uh, about, read about man. Let's see what Paul said. He said, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole, your whole spirit, and soul and body be preserved blameless unto, unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul is praying for uh, the, the people, the, the believers in the Thessalonica. He said, I'm going to pray for you, your whole being, like your spirit, your soul and body be preserved. So that tells me that man has three parts. We have spirit, we have soul, we have body. And God created man in his image. If we have three parts, so that means God has three parts. And uh, this is the, uh, the diagram. You see uh, uh, a man. One man was made of three parts. We just read in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, that we have body, we have soul, we have spirit. So body gives us world, con world consciousness. We relate to, to the world, to this physical Universe. We interact with physical universe through our bodies. You know, we have five senses. You know, seeing, hearing, you know, all the tasting, you know, all the uh, all the five senses that we have that we interact with physical universe. Like for example, I can lift this iPad. Can I? Can my spirit lift lift this up or my soul? No, I need a body to interact with physical universe, with material universe, to pick up something, to work. Or, or to do something. So I need a body to do, to interact with physical universe. So that body gives us world consciousness. Soul is uh, consisted of uh, three things, like our emotion, that we can cry, we can laugh, we can love, we can hate, because we have soul. And also we have will, that we can make decisions. We can make decisions, we can do something. And, uh, you know, this is our soul. So it's like our mind, and we have mind. We can think. We can think, we can make decisions, and, uh, and we have emotions. We can cry and be happy, or be miserable, or love, or hate. 
because we have soul and, and we have spirit. Spirit gives us God consciousness. Soul gives us self consciousness. We can know ourselves. We can know others. Uh, and, we, uh, you know, and also we have spirit which gives us God's consciousness. God consciousness. We can relate to God. We worship God. Why? Because we have spirit. So usually all the people of the world, they worship something. They either worship the true God or the false God. So, but they have a spirit, so they seek God. They want to worship something. So what's the difference between an animal and a human being? Well, animals have body like a dog. A dog has a body. We have a body. A dog has a soul like emotion. They can cry and be happy. They can make decisions to eat or uh, to have sex. And, you know, they have soul. And we have spirit that we worship God. Animals don't have spirit. So they are, according to the theology, they call it dichotomy. It means they have two parts. Animals have just body and soul. They don't have spirit. So they, are, they have two parts. Men's have, men have three parts. So this, this is like just a body. No soul, no spirit. Animals have two parts. And human beings have three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. Spirit and uh, so God made man in his image. God didn't make angels in his image. Angels are just spirit being, ministering to the saints, just spirit being. They have no soul, no body. They can't make decisions. They can't do anything physical. They're just ministering spirit. Whatever God tells them to do, they do. They obey. Well, animals have two parts, but God made only man in his image. That's a privilege. No creatures were made in the image of God. Only man. And look at this. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. Name is singular or plural? What is it? That's singular. That means Jesus said there is one God. He said, baptize them in, the, in, the, in only one God. In the name of, that means there is only one God, Jesus said. But he said, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus believed in one God, but he said in in the Godhead, there are three parts, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So one man has three parts, body, soul, and spirit. One God also has three parts. As we have spirit, which gives us God consciousness, like morality, we, we know what is good and what is evil. We, we can be holy because of spirit, holiness. And also, God has a Holy Spirit. God has a spirit called Holy Spirit, which gives us moral. Uh, God is holy. Three times holy, 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 holy. Oh, kadosh, kadosh, kadosh in Hebrew means, uh, means holy, holy, holy. So he's got Holy Spirit. As we have soul, our soul tells our body what to do. Like my, I, I get up in the morning, like this morning I was so tired and my soul told me, it's eight o'clock, you have to get up and be prepared, you have to go to church. I said, no, my body said, I am tired. I need to sleep more because I went to bed very late. I need to sleep more, I'm tired. But soul said, no, you have to get up and go to, go to work, go, go to church. Otherwise, people will be waiting for you. I said, okay, uh, I'm going to get up. So I, dis I obeyed my soul. So my soul, my mind, told my body what to do. And my body, I, I got up and, and took shower. And I prayed. I read my Bible. And I ate my breakfast. And I walked and came to, uh, you know, my pastor picked me up. So we came to church. My body does the physical but my soul was in charge. He told my body what to do, and my body did it. And my spirit worships God. I, I pray, and I... You see, God has the same thing. God has three parts. God has a spirit called Holy Spirit. And the, as we have a soul, which tells our, our body what to do, God has a, a part, something like our soul, called God the Father, which is 100% God. God the Father is like our soul. He makes decisions. He, he thinks. He has a mind. He... He wants to do something. He wanted to create universe. So he, he's like an arch architect. He designs. So as our soul tells our body what to do, God the Father tells a part of himself uh, is like our body called God the Son, which is 100% God. He tells his son what to do, and his son does, interacts with the physical universe. So God, without the son, can't do anything. He can't create. God the Father, like my soul. My soul can't do anything without my body. He needs my body. So these three things complement my, my being. So I have to have three parts. 
to be one full man, to be able to live. So if I had just a spirit and soul, no body, I couldn't live. I need my body. If I had body and soul and no spirit, I could be dead. So I need three parts to be one living man. So God is the same. God is one God in three parts. Without one of them, God won't be perfect, complete. So each part is 100. It's not like 33%, 33%. It's not like that. It's 100% God. Each one individually, uh, you know, 100% God. It makes one Godhead, one God. Not, they're not three gods. They're just one God. They make up one Godhead. So God the Son is the only one who interacts with the physical universe. So God the Father uh, told God the Son to create universe. He told him to create it like a globe. Uh, and to, to create like in it like sea and trees and everything, mountains, everything. And God the Son, exactly what he was told, he did it. He created. You see, uh, does it make sense? You have to explain this to, to Muslims. Otherwise, they think that we, we are crazy. We worship three gods. No, Jesus said there is only one God in the name, singular. But he said of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And God made man in his image after his likeness. There is similarity between God and man. And in John chapter 6, verse 46, let's watch, see what Jesus said. He said, not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God, he has seen the Father. So Jesus said, no man has seen the Father. No man has seen the Father. Only the one, save he which is of God. The one who is of God, he has seen the Father. Only who? Only Jesus has seen the Father. No man has seen the Father. No people have seen the Father. Can you see my soul? Can you see my mind? No, you need to see my body. So if you want to see God, you have to see Jesus. You have to worship Jesus to worship the true God. You can't see Father. No man has seen the Father, Jesus said. So there is a question then. If no man has seen the Father... So who was it in the Old Testament who appeared to Adam in the cool of the day? He walked with Adam. Who was it that who appeared to Abraham? To many prophets in the Old Testament. Who was it? Like for example, Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. So God came, he was walking in the garden, and he said, Adam, where are you? And, and so God was able to walk with Adam just before his fall. And then he reached out to Adam, he wanted to save them, save Adam and his wife. But anyway, I mean, God appeared to Adam and Eve. So Jesus said, no man has seen the Father. So who was it who appeared to Adam and Eve, who walked with them in the cool, cool of the day? So that was God the Son. That was God the Son in 4000 BC. About 4000 BC, he appeared to Adam. That was God the Son. Because God the Son is the part of God who can interact with the physical universe, with the world. So it was God the Son who appeared to Adam. You have to mention this to, to the Muslim. They could see that Jesus wasn't born in Bethlehem, but he existed even before the creation. He appeared to Adam. Or... He appeared to Abraham 2000, about 2000 BC. You know, we read this in Genesis 12, verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto thy seed, Will I give this land? And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So God appeared unto him. Who was it? Jesus said, No man has seen the Father. So if he wasn't the Father, so that was God the Son who appeared to Abraham. And the next one, God appeared to Moses in 1500 B.C. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 2 and 4, we read, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. So in a bush there was an angel. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him. But when you read uh, uh, verse uh, 4, And when the Lord saw that the angel was in the bush, in the burning bush, but here in verse 4 said, And the Lord in the midst of the bush. So that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. So that was God who appeared just like an angel. The angel of the Lord was God. 
himself. He called Moses out of the midst of the bush. He said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. So that was God the Son who appeared to Moses in 1500 BC. You know, all the way God is appearing to people, to Adam, Abraham, Moses, and the next one to Solomon, about 1000 BC. He appeared to Solomon. When Solomon built the temple, the great temple, and he dedicated to God, and see what happened. First King chapter 9, verse 2 to 3, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed his, this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. So forever. He said, my eyes, my heart will be there in the temple. So the Lord appeared to Solomon. No man has seen the Father. So who was it who appeared to Solomon? That was God the Son. And then God appeared to Isaiah in about 700 BC. And we read that in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 and verse 5. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. I saw the Lord, Adonai. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord sitting upon a, upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And verse 5, he said, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Look at this. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So he saw the King, the Lord of hosts. He saw God. No man has seen the Father. So who was it that Isaiah saw as God, the Lord of hosts? That was God the Son who appeared to Isaiah again. Because Son is the only one who interacts with physical universe. And then he appeared to Ezekiel about 600 BC. You know, all the way through the history, God appeared to people. Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 18 to 20. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of house and stood over the cherubims because uh, that time in Ezekiel time the Jews were worshipping idols. They, were, they, they would go to temple, worship Jehovah and, and then they would turn their back and uh, worship the sun. They would worship the sun and the moon and idols. And uh, we read verse 19, and the cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight when they went out the wheels also were beside them, and everyone stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of God of Israel was over them above. This is the living creature that I saw under the God of Israel. Ezekiel, he said, I saw the living creatures who, who were under the God of Israel. So he saw God of Israel, he saw cherubims and, uh, and by the river of Chebar, and I knew that they were cherubims. So you see, Ezekiel saw God. No man has seen the Father. Who was it? That was God the Son who appeared to Ezekiel. And then at the end, what happened? The same God manifested in the flesh. He was born of Virgin Mary. And they called him, his name was Jehovah, they called him Jesus. Jesus, as we uh, studied that in previous session, his name in Hebrew is Yeshua. Yeshua means Yahweh saves. The same Jehovah, uh, God of the Old Testament, came to die on the cross, to pay the penalty that we deserve, the penalty of our sins, which is hell and death and hell and lake of fire. He came to die to save us from hell. So we don't have to go to hell. Uh, lovingly and willingly he did because he loved us so much. And when Jesus was born, before that, God, Jesus had only one nature. He was fully God, 100% God. But when he was born of Virgin Mary, he, he, he became a man. He became 100% man plus 100% God. So he had twin natures. Twin nature. He, he was fully God and he became fully man. A lot of people, a lot of uh, like, uh, Christians like JWs, uh, are, they misunderstanding this doctrine of Jesus being God. Or Muslims, they don't see Jesus as Twin nature, you know, he had twin because Jesus was able to eat. 
Jesus was able to pray. Why? Because he was fully man, 100% man, like, just like you and, you and I. He was 100% a man, and he was able to eat. He, he was tired. He, he went to sleep. He went to have rest, and he prayed to Father. He said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He prayed to, to the Father. Why? Because he was 100% man. And as a man, he died on the cross. He died. But can you kill God? Can you destroy God? No, you can't. So because Jesus was fully man, as a man he was able to die. So he was fully man, but he was also God. Sometimes Jesus used his, uh, uh, you know, man's nature, human nature, but sometimes he used his God's nature. For example, he raised people from the dead. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out of the grave and he was alive. Why? Because he used his God's nature. He, he didn't say, oh, God, please uh, raise him from the dead. He commanded. He commanded, my, my son, thy sins be forgiven thee. With authority, he was commanding and everything was done. He was uh, speaking and the, uh, the miracles were performed. So he became man. He was fully man and he was God. He used his God's nature sometimes and he used his man's nature. That's why Muslims don't understand that Jesus was fully man. When they see that Jesus was tired and he was sleeping, he was uh, going to toilet, and he, they said, oh, you you worshiping a man. You're not worshiping God. I understand where you're coming from, but Jesus is God who became man. So you need to understand that twin nature. You need to explain this to Muslims. He had twin natures. You know, He was able to uh, use his man, human nature, and he was also able to use his God's nature. He was God always from the everlasting to everlasting. He was God. But for 33 years only, he became man to die for man. Why? To die for man to save us from hell. And in John 1, verse 1 to 3 and verse 14, we read that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word, it talks about the Word. Word is our exp expression. You know, you speak, it comes from your heart. Whatever is in your heart, it comes, uh, it comes from your mouth, and you express whatever, whatever you want to say. You communicate with people. Uh, so it comes from your inner heart, your word. And that word was with God, and the word itself, or himself, was God. The same means the same word was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Him is word. It talks about the word. All things means heaven and earth, all Creation, all the universe were made by the word. And without him, without the word, was not anything made that was made. And the word which was with God, which was God, the same word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word which was with God which was God himself, the word was made flesh. He took a flesh on himself. He became man to die on the cross for man. So you see that uh, Jesus is the word who was with God always, uh, you know, part of Trinity, and he was himself God, 100% God, and everything were made, all things were made by him. That means Jesus created the universe, all the universe, he became flesh. He made flesh. He was made flesh and dwelled among us. He became to live with us, to dwell among us. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. It was a mystery in the Old Testament. The godliness in the Godhead was a mystery that God was manifested in the flesh. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, means Holy Spirit justified him, approved him, at his, uh, uh, you know, baptism, at his resurrection. Uh, and uh, so a scene of angels. Angels saw him. He, when he was born, angels appeared to shepherds, and they said, this day in the city of David, uh, there, there was a born unto you a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So angels saw him and preached unto the Gentiles through the preachers, apostles. We preach unto the Gentiles and believed on, in the world. We can believe in him and get saved and received up into glory. He has ascended up to heaven, sitting on the right hand of God, and he is making intercession for us as a high priest. And one day he's going to come back as a king, king of glory. So you see, God was manifested in the flesh. Jesus is God who was manifest, who appeared 
in the flesh as a man to die for us. So that's Trinity, and um, so I hope uh, you understood Trinity was clear because it's so important. You have to explain this to Muslims, otherwise they think that you are crazy, that you believe in three gods, uh, and that God doesn't have a physical son. We don't believe that God has a physical son. We believe that God has a who we are son, same nature as, not technon, physical son, but who we are. Remember this, who we are, same nature as. He's got same nature as God. He is in the bosom of God, in the, like in inner, like in Godhead, there is a part called God the Son, that God the Son came down from heaven, became man. He departs. So I can't send part of myself to, to visit my family back in Iran. I can't do that. But God is able to do it. God is able to, to be in heaven at the same time and also travel and go to any universe, any place he wants to. Look at this. Um, um, just want to read to you the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Very important verse. Chapter 3, when he spoke to Nicodemus. Um, this is very important. John 3, 13. He said, And no man has ascended up to heaven. No man. No man has ascended up to heaven. But he that came down from heaven... So who was it who came down from heaven? That was Jesus who manifested in the flesh. But look at the, the rest of it. He said, even the Son of Man, means himself, Jesus, even the Son of Man, which is in where? Which is at the moment, in the present tense, which is in heaven. So where is Jesus? Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus on the earth. But he said, the Son of Man, which is in heaven. At the same time, Jesus was on the earth, talking to Nicodemus, and at the same time he said, the Son of Man which is in heaven. At the same time, Jesus was in heaven. You see? That's called omnipresence. Jesus was omnipresent. He was everywhere at the same time. He was in heaven. He was uh, in Israel with Nicodemus. He was in Iran. He was in Iraq. He was in Middle East, in America. He was everywhere. So at the same time. So, uh, uh, that was the end of this session. Let's pray and close our um, session. Father, we thank you, Lord, for eternal Son of God, who we us, Jesus Christ, who was God, who manifested in the flesh, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be able to explain this uh, doctrine of Trinity, which we find in the Bible over and over in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament, that we might be able to explain it to Muslims so they can understand that Jesus is not a prophet, but he is God Almighty, and he is the creator but also he became the savior of the world. He died for all people that all might get saved by trusting him as their savior, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.